Welcome to the Level 1 Podcast, where we're busy having fun getting completely soaked. In mid-2016, I accidentally streamed myself masturbating. Palsy Fritz, he, he masturbates with his left hand, he's special. We were all very excited to hear that. S. Bucks Chris says, why do people think that having a girlfriend or wife means you can't jerk it? I do it to kill time, there's a lot of quality free porn out there. <laughs> Hey, at least you don't do what, what, what was that trick that people used to do? You sit on your hand so it's all pins and needles, and then you masturbate with the hand because you can't feel the hand, so it feels like a stranger's jerking you off. <laughs> I went to open my seltzer. It exploded all over me. It, my desk is soaked with seltzer water. My crotch is soaked. My chair is soaked. <laughs> What a great start to the week and a great start to the show, everyone. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. If you give me a second here to allow me to get the chat in order, and what I'm going to do is grab some paper towels or something to dry myself. Perhaps a towel. All right? Seriously. Give me a second because I am completely and utterly soaked. Holy shit. All right, hold on. Yikes. That was impressive. Like, it really erupted, like, everywhere. I was shocked. It, like, scared me. I thought, like, something was happening. <laughs> it's like, I've never seen a seltzer erupt like that before. It must have been, like, massively overcarbonated. Oh, my God! What the fuck? Whoa! Whoa! Oh, don't lose him. What in the fuck was that, dude? Holy fucking titty twisting, what the fuck? Oh. As you noticed, there's been a lot of improvements here on the streams as of late. We've got new artwork for the new year. We've got ambient lighting, right? But the one thing that stuck out, stood out like a sore thumb is the lighting, the regular lighting. Let's be honest here. Everyone's like, wow, Phil, so now you've improved webcam, you've improved setup, but it's really hard to see it well. Because you have this this lighting, what it, you know, what's your lighting? My lighting is literally a crappy ass, no exaggeration, lamp that I bought at Target like 10 years ago. I don't spend money on any luxuries whatsoever. I'm not even exaggerating. I have nothing. Everything I pay for is an existing debt. If not longer than that, because I think I brought it out of Connecticut and shipped it across the country. It's basically five light bulbs on those bendy arm lamps. Um... And I use it on various settings. I turn it on level 1, it's one bulb. Level 2 is three bulbs. And level 5 is all five bulbs. I almost never use level 5. Level 5 is like way too much light for this room. Typically, I go between level 1 and level 3, depending on the situation. And the other light source I have is natural light. If I open my blinds, it actually dramatically changes how it looks in here. Would you like to see? Because right now my blinds are closed. And now my blinds are open, and voila, look how different the room looks when there's actual natural light in here, right? I mean, wow, did that not just change the entire appearance of the, the podcast? Wow, whatever. There you go. Calls like a seagull says, so up next, you're going to get a hot tub to stream in. Yes, and a giant inflatable pickle rick will be on stream before you know it. You know, we're going to be doing all the things that all those popular streamers do. We're making the big bucks here on DSP Gaming moving forward. Absolutely, it's coming. But a lot of YouTubers that started... Around the time that I did, before I did, and even after I did, are gone. Right? They're not doing what I'm doing. I'm, I hate to say it. You know, there's YouTubers out there that right now who don't haven't diversified. They don't have a live streaming presence plus a YouTube presence. They're dying. Right now, they're dying. <coughs> ten years ago. Yes, you can believe it, guys. It's the ten-year anniversary. Ten years. All right. Ten years of me. Of me doing direct capture on the internet. Seems like yesterday when I ran to Best Buy with John Rambo. And we bought two capture devices. And I came home and I plugged into HD PVR 2. And we were streaming arcade craft for you guys on Twitch. I remember. Now listen. I like chill games. You know that. I love instituting chill playthroughs into my schedule. It gives good variety. And it gives us nights where we can just kind of chill and interact. And not be so hyper focused on progress in a game. Top contributor tonight will get something in the game named after them. So far, we have one $2 tip from Jerk Store, and that's the top contribution. I've been streaming for an hour. The top contributor is $2. So it's not too hard to be top contributor tonight. I'm just saying, <laughs> like, you have a pretty easy ride here if you want to jump in and, you know, and get something in the game either made or named for in your honor here. 
uh, you got an easy route because we have not had many contributions come in tonight. <laughs> Derek says, I wonder if Jerk Store will be top contributor. I mean, if so, that would be the lowest ever contributions ever on a Minecraft stream. No lie. Two, a $2 top contribution? I would think no. I think that's the people waiting for the end um, to try to get that top contribution in. But that would be pretty crazy if that was the biggest contribution of tonight. Holy shit. You know, I'm not gonna lie, that would suck because I'm coming back from not doing Minecraft for a long time and seeing now announcing, oh, it's gonna be a regular part of the streams. And then if I had like the lowest contributions ever, I'd be like, what the hell happened? People lo used to love this, right? But and the thing, that's the thing, I don't control it. I just hang out, I talk with you guys, we have a good time. Like, I don't control that factor. I'm not gonna sit here and ask all night for people to contribute. That's ridiculous, you know? I'm just here to have fun and play a game. I'm not here to sit here and panhandle all night. So. It is what it is, you know. <clears throat> Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for my very special segment every year, every year, every week, that I like to call Phil's Day Off. <laughs> when we order food, we order from a delivery service, and there's various different ones that we've used over the years. Um, and every delivery service that we use, okay? Hold on. Oh. That was absolutely disgusting. Every delivery service that we use, all right, we always give very detailed instructions on how to deliver the food because we live in a private community, all right? Scrooge McDuck, son of a bitch! So before I continue with my story, uh, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to start a new segment here on the Level 1 Podcast called... <laughs> me clicking the wrong thing. Called... Wait, where is it? Oh, I clicked... Here it is. Old Man Yells at Cloud segment. We're an old man because I'm 40 years old now. I'm starting to get ornery. I'm starting to get upset at the world. Basically, bitches and complains about the world. Now allow me to do this to laugh at myself because I fucked that up. <laughs> <laughs> I completely misclicked. I'm stupid. <clears throat> okay. So anyway, yes. In this new segment, whenever I'm going to bitch about something, that obviously is something that's probably just me venting on my podcast, I will click at this to show my age. All right? So, as you know... I'm very, I get very upset sometimes when I tell you guys about how things are negatively affected in life by people who basically don't know how to do their job, people who don't use their brains, people who basically just coast through life. I've talked about this many times before. So, yesterday we order food. It's from a restaurant, and this restaurant's a little bit further away than a normal restaurant we would order from. So already, instead of being like maybe a 30-minute wait to get our food, it's going to be like, you know, an hour wait. In fact, just for full disclosure... It's a restaurant that actually we've only eaten at once before. It's actually a relatively new restaurant in our area. This restaurant does um, boiled seafood. So, for example, they boil shrimp. They boil crab. They boil all kinds of stuff. They also do fried seafood. And so my wife just decided that she wanted to do some boiled shrimp. And I was going to get like a, a, a meal of fried, like half fried shrimp and half cod. Like fish and chips, but with some shrimp too. Um... And it sounded really good. We're like, this is something different. We haven't done this in a, very, in, in a you know, last year, in the middle of the year, we did it once. And we said, why not do it again, okay? This is pretty cool, all right? So we order from the place, but we know it takes a while because the food is fresh, they're gonna make it, and it's a little bit further away, so they're gonna take a little longer to drive it here, all right? So we order the food. Now, allow me to explain why I needed to preface this telling you that we live in a private community and I put special instructions into the delivery service apps because the way we, uh, we live in a private neighborhood, all right? There's two gates to our neighborhood. There's a back gate that doesn't open. It's only for emergencies. If there's a fire or police need to come here, then it opens. Outside of that, it's not for people to come in and out. It's not for deliveries. It's only for emergencies. We have a front gate. That gate has a call box. That gate allows you to buzz people inside the facility, talk to them to get in. And if, you know, you have specific instructions on how to get in, you can get in via that call box, okay? So... Every time that we order food, we make sure that there's instructions in the delivery service that says 
FYI, if you want to get in, you must go to the front gate, which is accessed by this particular road, all right? And you have to go to the, the call box. You have to enter in this certain thing, and then the call box will allow you access. And I even say in the instructions, our particular unit is all the way in the back, so just drive to the back, and I even give specific instructions on how to get to the front door, all right? Like, probably the most detailed instructions you could have if you read the instructions and put 10 seconds of effort into your job there's no way you could possibly screw this up and not deliver the food all right so once again i'm putting this up because yes i know a lot of you're going to say i'm being a karen or i'm being an old fart i'm angry at someone for not doing their job you're absolutely right so here's what happens okay we wait and we wait and we wait and this guy is taking forever to deliver the food and we're like this is like ridiculous we're starving okay so it got to the point where I stopped tracking. I was like, this guy's taking it forever. So I, I, you know what they say? The watch pot never boils, right? So I'll have my phone here with me. So if the guy happens to contact me and say he can't get in or he can't give it to food, I'll, I'll at least have it here with me. I'll be able to answer. But instead, I'm going to put the phone down. I'm just going to watch Cat play some Fallout. So that's exactly what we did, okay? All of a sudden, I get notification. Your food's delivered, okay? Oh, Cool. I jump up off the couch. I run to the front door. I open the door. There's no food. Huh? So I'm now, like, wait a minute. So I go back to my phone because what happens is when they deliver food, they're supposed to leave a picture. Okay? So I say, all right, so let's see where the food is. So ladies and gentlemen, I present to you. That's really small. I present to you the picture that was presented to me. All right. This is the food that we had ordered. And here it is delivered about, I'd argue, almost a full hour after we had ordered it. All right. Because um, the guy kind of took a long time to deliver the food. Now, here it is. Okay, so here's the food. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, that's not my door. And we don't have a planter. So where did this person leave the food? Right? So we're hungry. All right. And I'm like, honey, I'm going to find the food. All right. I grab a flashlight. It's it's like almost it's like 6:30 p.m. So it's dark outside. Okay, I grab a flashlight. I grab my cell phone. So I've got this picture on my cell phone, and I'm walking around our private neighborhood with a flashlight, going door to door, looking at everyone's front door, looking for the food. Okay, for clarification purposes, there's four to five rows of homes. Each row has six to seven homes in it. So basically, I was looking at about 50 different houses trying to figure out where the food was, okay? So I run outside. I'm in the dark, running around the neighborhood with the flashlight. My neighbors are looking out the window like, is there a prowler out there? Like, who is that? Running around the neighborhood with a flashlight, right? They don't know what's going on. So luckily for me, no one called the cops. Not that it would matter. Obviously, I live here. It's not a big deal. Um, so I go all the way to the front. First thing I think is maybe this guy is so lazy he didn't read the instructions. Maybe he happened to get in and he just dropped it at the first doorstep. So I start going from house to house looking for the food. All right. And it's not at any of them. I'm like, man, no one has this planter, right? No, it doesn't look like this at anyone's house. So I start to get halfway through our, our, our neighborhood. And I realized something. It dawned on me. All right. There's a, there's a, a, a big red flag sticking out in this photo. That It's a realization to me. All right, so you look at this. Here's the realization. Look at the food and look what it's sitting on. It's sitting on a wooden deck, okay? No one here has a wooden deck. Everyone's house has a concrete staircase. And I'm thinking to myself, where did he leave this food? No one has wood. And I, then I start to think, did he go into someone's backyard and someone over the years had maybe paid to have a wooden deck in their backyard. And this idiot actually left the food on the back porch of someone's house. So I am so confused. All right. <clears throat> so I, I, I continue to look through the, 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 you know, the neighborhood. And then finally, I'm like, it's not here. There's no way it's here. All right. So I actually text the guy because the open, the, I guess it's, it's like 20 minutes after a delivery the open window stays open so you can text the guy. And I text him, I say, listen, I don't know what you just did, but 
you sent me this picture saying you delivered the food. No one here has a wooden porch. So I don't know what you did, but obviously you delivered it completely to the wrong place, man. Like, what, what the heck? All right? Then I proceeded to contact DoorDash because that was the app that I was using. I said, hey, DoorDash, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. Can we, like, get a refund or something? And they were like, well, you have some options. You can actually just get it re-delivered again for free. And I was like, well, we want the food. But now it sucks because now we have to wait for the restaurant to remake the food again. We have to wait for it to be delivered again. Like, what a nightmare. Okay? So we're like, all right, here's what we'll do. We'll tell them we just want the re-delivery. Okay? So we, re we say, we're going to re-deliver. It says, you got to wait a whole other hour. And I'm like, what the fuck? Are you fucking serious? Well, what are you going to do? We're starving at this point, but what are you going to do? Let it wait. All right? So we did. And we waited. Now, in the meantime, the driver texts me back. All right. Now, I don't know why, because if you're this embarrassing that you literally just left your food at completely the wrong place, right? Why in the holy hell would you ever text someone back? <laughs> I mean, it's just that's brain dead stupid, but he did. He texts back and he goes, oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, I listened to your instructions and I drove all the way to the end of a private community and I, just, I left it on the doorstep. Uh, if you have an issue... Contact DoorDash to get your money back. And I'm like, what? Is he telling me he got into a different private community? Because here's the thing. Again, to get into our community, you need you need the instructions to get in the gate. The gate will not open unless you know how to open it, right? How did he get in? I found it in the app because I didn't know you could do this. I found it later that night. I was just kind of searching around. I was like, I wonder if there's a way I can actually figure out where he left the food. Oh, yeah, I figured it out hours later. They geotagged his picture. All right? Ladies and gentlemen, here is where the food is. Okay? So, without showing you much, okay? This is, that's my street that you can see. Okay? They see that blue dot right there? That blue dot is me. And it actually showed the direction I was looking in my home. Okay, so at the time when I was on my phone, I was looking at the wall, and that's the direction I was staring, or the phone was looking at. Okay? This person left the food, get this, behind our back gate, which doesn't open, has no call box, okay? And just left it on someone's porch out there, without even looking at the address. Because none of those homes are anything like my address at all. Okay? Okay? Pretty stupid. It doesn't even make sense. Like, huh? So let me get this straight. I left you. By the way, I should do this again. Let me get this straight. I left you specific instructions that said you must enter our private community from a, a, a road. It had the name of the road. You must go to a call box. You must use these instructions on the call box to get the gate to open. You must drive to the back of the facility and the, our home is this number, and here's how you leave the food at our front door. Like, all this is in the app. It's all there for them. There was one other time ever when we just didn't get our food at all. All right? This time, I actually feel was worse than yesterday. I want to tell you this story, too, because I don't think I ever told you this story. So, the one other time we never got our food, all right? Same situation. We order the food, and... Uh, this time, that time, I was actually tracking the person. It wasn't like this time where I was just casually watching Cat play games or whatever. That time, I was actively tracking the person. And I outright saw that person drive next door into the apartment complex next to us. Okay? They went in there. All right? And go and drive in. And they, they're driving in circles. And I texted them. I'm like... You're, dude, you're in the wrong place. You gotta go next door. You just gotta go back out to the road, take a right, take another right. You'll be right there, and then our instructions that are in the app are good. You gotta do that, okay? He basically calls me, and now I'm not gonna answer the phone, because I'm in the middle of stuff in my house. I text him back. I said, dude, I just told you what to do. You gotta leave and go out to the main road. 
And he starts texting me, agitated. No, I am here. Why don't you come out? Why don't you get the food? Come get your food. Like, in caps. He's screaming at me. <laughs> Through the air. I'm like, the hell? Like, why is this guy so pissed at me? Right? Like, he's making the mistake. So, come to find out, the guy basically can't read. Because I'm texting him specific instructions and he can't understand them. So I can't help that you're stupid and you don't understand intelligent, like, conversation and intelligent commentary on something and criticism. So, sorry that you're stupid. So I immediately contact the customer support. Oh, your driver said they just had a personal emergency and they had to stop your order. I was like, what? I said, dude, go look at the chat, the chat history right now. This guy's literally next door. And he's an idiot and he can't read. So because he can't read my text for the instructions, he's driving in a circle and he pissed himself off. And then he lied <laughs> to get out of it. So that was that was the worst. That was the absolute worst. This time, the guy attempted to, to, to deliver it, but he was an idiot. I mean, I, I've never seen someone that dumb. I literally tell you, you must enter from a road. There is a call box. Here's how you get in at the call box. Drive to the back. Here's how you get to our house. He uses GPS to just drive to a gate. There's no call box. It's not the road it says to be on. And it's not the address of the house that it says to leave the food at. And he just puts it down and drives away. Dude, seriously, like, my mind is blown that there are people that stupid. Really, my mind is just like, I can't believe that there's human beings on the planet that actually are that unintelligent.